So, hey guys, this week I've been working on a new update 0.8 and that's because, um, you know, I usually do 0.7.1, 0.7.2 but this is a major change once again, so I'm gonna make it 0.8 It's gonna be available to download in the comments below or just through, um, the library will be downloadable from your library manager in Arduino I've gotten to fix some of your bugs that you've mentioned, like the com sending hole uh, and, yeah Com one hole increase, hole decrease has been fixed. Um, I believe the standby com two has been fixed um, as well, which I believe was a bug. I'm not quite sure if I fixed it or it was already fixed. Doesn't matter. It's out there now. Um, so thanks for the reports on that one. This update is going to be mainly focusing on adding multiple Arduinos as inputs to your connector. So one connector multiple Arduinos as inputs without having the need to open it several times, settings wouldn't save, COM ports wouldn't save, um, so I tackled that this week. Outputs are still an issue though, but I'm going to talk you through that in this video. If you want to keep updated with latest updates for the connector, subscribe. Um, I've got a Discord up right now, which can be found on my YouTube channel in the banner. I will also put a link in the description, so if you guys are interested um, to just show off your work, if you have questions about the connectors, want to talk about the coding, or interested in helping out, um, go check it out. It's free. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's just dive right in. So it's been a bit of a silent week last week, for you guys at least. Um, I've been hard at work to create several things. One of them is I've got a new Discord server if you guys want to keep up to date with the latest connector, the status, um, features that are coming, features that are already developed and when they will be releasing. Um, there's a channel for that, there's a channel to just talk about flight simming, there's a channel to talk about your own creations, perhaps you're stuck in something, perhaps you just want to show off that beautiful button box that you've made last week. Um, I've got a place for you, got a question about your code, feel free to ask it in there. Um, oh, you're also free to just email me at the info at bitsandroids.com. If you've emailed me, I assure you that I've responded. It usually just goes straight to spam for some reason. Um, so if you haven't gotten a response yet, please check your spam folder. So that's the first announcement. Now, what's the second one? That what? <laughs> it took so much work, but I think that we're in a place right now that it works. So first, the things that don't work. This is the output tab, right? Um, one thing to notice is, look how it's at COM20. If I close it, I'm gonna reopen it. And it's still at COM20. This makes it easier for you to just open the program every time, hit the start button and be done. If you already selected the values that you needed, the values that you wanted, etc., you can just start it, press start, and it will go. Now, there is a plus button here and something with the load set, set names and save. These do not work yet. Why is it in here already? Well, because I started implementing this, but this took quite some work, especially because I still need to find a proper way to manage these checkboxes and save them in a set. Because why, why would I want to save it in a set? Well, if you hit the plus button, a new row will come saying COM20 or whatever COM you'd like and an option to give you select your own input set. Once you've selected the set and the COM port, it will send that packet of data to that COM port and the other packet that you've defined in the other set to the other one. This will make it possible for you to have multiple outputs on one connector instance. Well, like I already mentioned, this doesn't work yet. Um, what does work is this one. If you want to hide it, you know, just have a plain view. You can click the three dots. Now, if you go to the inputs, because this is where it does work. Once again, the three dots, see the options at the top. But here we have COM35, and as you notice, I didn't select this. I selected this previously, and that is why um, I, it's already filled in right here. If I hit the plus, and the plus, and a 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 plus, and it stops at 10. I haven't tested this past beyond four Arduinos hooked up. Um, I got this to work and it was such a, 
I love to do it, but this was, I don't know. I, some things that I programmed were, you know, it worked and that's, that's the most important part, but it wasn't beautiful. So I had to rewrite some stuff to get this working. Then it doesn't work and some bugs hit counters. Um, so it was a bit of a hassle, but right now we can do, let's see, I know my COM25 is connected. I know that COM23 is connected and COM36, 26. I'm not quite sure. We can hit start. And if I'm correct, let me. So I Frankenstein together this table. Well, that really sounded German, didn't it? On this device, I got the red button hooked up. On this device, I got the green button hooked up. And here I got the double rotary encoder hooked up. I'm going to do a separate video on how to use these um, because you guys asked many, many times how to use them and how to implement them in your code. So I'm going to do a small separate video with the emphasis on small. It's not going to be an hour long, just how to use our double rotary encoder and which library makes, makes implementation as easy as a normal rotary encoder, perhaps even more easy than you're used to. So. We've got three inputs to find, right? So if I rotate, we can see that it's working, at least this part. For the button, I believe I got altitude holds, altitude hold at the autopilot. And that's working. So that's the second Arduino, it's hooked up to the Nano. And the third Arduino is the autopilot on or off. I haven't selected the right COM port apparently, so I'm gonna stop. Um, 23 is a different one, I think, then it must be, I really do you know, 40, start. Yeah, I didn't have a delay in this button, so if I press it, there's a chance that I hit it twice. Um, as we can see, it goes on or off, but if we now turn, ah, this is altitude on and not off, so if I now hit it again, okay, it was 76, see, I should all, ah, I always prepare these things, and then when I start it, I forget all my preparations, and now we got it back. L to hold, L to hold. See where this is going? Oh, I need to plug this back in, or else it's going to trip. Here we go. So that one's working. Autopilot, and this. So these are three Arduinos on the same connector. We're able to tell, oh, see, three connections. The COM port will be remembered. So if I add it, we can see that there already is a pre-filled one. If it's not available, it will just give you a blank. I'm not quite sure what happens if you start to connect it with a blank. So let's see, okay, it crashes. I need to create a fix for that, but it's gonna take a while. And I want this in the hands of you guys to see how stable it is. If you encounter any issues, if you encounter any bugs, if you, because I'm 100% sure that there is going to be something that I overlooked and that your guys will be like, Dave, you missed that. Please let me know. Send me an email. Hit me on Discord. Not hit me on Discord. Hit me up on Discord. And I will look at uh, what is possible. I've added a few um, variables as well. Oh, here. GPS. GPS courses here. You guys have been asking for that one quite a bit. Um... The inputs, I removed the list here with the available commands. And the reason for that is that I had to update it on this place. I had to update it in the documentation. So that gave me two places to keep up to date. And when I fix something there, I didn't immediately fix something in documentation online. So it's going to be a documentation online. It's going to be the main focus. I'm going to include a PDF as well, not in this release, but in the next release. Um, because I'm actively working on the documentation with someone that's helped me out. So thanks a lot on that. Um, to get it up to par, get easy examples in your hands, how you can implement certain features, how you can implement certain code without having to reinvent the wheel. You know, you can just copy and paste perhaps a bit, just change the port or pins that you're using so that it's going to be easy for you to use. You still have the possibility to create your own um, codes and Arduino setups. That's no issue, but if you're perhaps just, you just want to use it 
without all the hassle um, of coding or you don't want to learn to code, um, we're working on some simple alternatives that you can just copy and paste or even change that slight piece of code. Let's say your pins where you connected it on the board so you can start to use it yourself. And I think the beauty of this library is that now we see that we can, we've got multiple Arduinos, but there is no limit to, you can multiplex, you can add any LCD screen you like, any TFT screen, as long as you know how to code or how to display information on that screen, you know how to get information from the connector to the screen itself. So that is something, um, yeah, that's, I think is the beauty of this. Um, you aren't limited to anything. You can code it yourself, how efficient you want it to be. You could even <laughs> start your toaster the moment the autopilot goes on if you'd like to. Um, so yeah, those are all the possibilities. I am working on a way to implement that a single Arduino is going to be able to send and receive data. I've been doing tests with a Teensy 4.1. It has the option to create two COM ports. Now you might think, okay, then the problem is solved. You can use one COM port for sending and one COM port for receiving. But in reality, I've noticed that even though it uses two separate COM ports, it all goes over the same USB cable, right? It comes in over one line, even though it shows up as two. This works fine when you send a command and you need to flip, let's say, um, switch the autopilot, uh, no, the communication one and two, switch it. So you hit it, click on it, it will send the command and it will send the data back to switch and that's fine. The moment you want to display the standby com or the standby nav, the moment you start turning on the rotary encoder is the moment the data starts changing. And that is when two things start changing at the same time. So your clicks keep turning because you keep turning. So it keeps sending commands until it reaches. You stop turning, but it also keeps receiving commands until you stop turning, right? Even though there are two separate COM ports, it still clashes and it corrupts the data that comes in. Sending the data goes fine, all in all. Um, but there's still lots of work to do on that part to get that smooth and efficient. Um, so that is something that's coming up in a later release, but it needs more work, just like the inputs as well, uh, output, sorry. Um, so for now, the advice will still be have a separate device for ins and have a separate device for outs. While well, I'm going to hit myself in the head on how to fix this and how to get it in a proper functioning way. Now, um, there was a lot of talking about latest updates, so it isn't really something that I can show off like, here, here, here I am in my plane, look at my flaps, it's all changing. Um, it's going to be easier right now to create videos like that because it's been a hell for me to... <laughs> I used to only use my throttle at times. Then I used uh, the toggle box, but I never used them at the same time because then I had to open two instances. And to be honest, probably just like you, uh, I couldn't be bothered with all the extra hassle to open it twice, select all the data, start it. When you reopen it, you have to reselect the data again because it only saves one set. So um, that wasn't ideal, wasn't proper properly implemented. Right now I have something that I can build on. I could hook up, right now I've got a limit of 10. Don't know if it can manage 10. I don't know what happens uh, if you go over five. I'm gonna look into that as well. Um, it just need more testing. That's the main part. This release is gonna be out, but perhaps you could even call it a beta because it's all, yeah, of course the development is a beta, but even this release is a bit more beta because I want to know how it acts in the wild, okay? So a lot of talking. Do we still have some topic points? Yes, we do have one, and that is that the source code is going to be available on GitHub today. I'm going to put the link in the description. I'm also going to create a video where I explain how the code works, um, at which part it does which. One thing to note, though, is that the main window is something that I've started to clean up. So this is okay. The input worker, like where the inputs come in, which... Um, like adding the extra COM ports, adding the extra, etc. It's it's a, it's a kind of a mess. It works. Um, I've been hacking at this all week. Um, I think it would be more than a full-time job that I spend on this, but 
yeah, it isn't always the most beautiful part. Um, like right down here, a row of if statements that determine how many columns you've connected. Um, but I got it working this way, and now I can look into if I need to optimize some certain parts, clean up the code, add some comments to make it more legible, etc. So the source code is out there. Go check it out if you are interested. If you want to help out, I'd love to get you get you guys involved. Um, according to all the mails and comments I've gotten, that is something you guys also like to do. So I just want to put my baby out there and see where it goes. It also will ensure that you know in the longevity there's all there's a bigger chance that this will survive and be implemented on and create new versions and because yeah if it's available out there people can easily add things um help build this to the next level because I, I and the main part is i want to keep this free for you guys um like i already mentioned i, I don't want this to become payware if you've got an Arduino lying around and you can download the software, I want you to be able to just plug and play and get on with it, right? So yeah, that's the main update I've been working on this week. The main part I would give to you guys is um, go check it out, have fun. The thing that doesn't save yet, keep in mind, is um, these values. And I had a reason, but I can't remember why. Um, but that's going to be fixed in a future release. It's important to always select a COM port or else remove it. And I can just start it or restart it. I think I got mine back on, right? I removed the wrong one, but that shouldn't really matter that much. Here we go. Altitude hold off. Yeah, so it's still working. Uh, except this one, but that's fine. So all in all, lots of talking and not much flying. I plan to uh, that achievement. Okay, I plan on um, completing the frequent flyer miles achievement. It's the one where you go from LFBD airport to KSEA. My main goal is to get this achievement because I want to have it. Um, and my second goal is to see um, if you guys want and you're online and you see me streaming and you've got a variable that's in here that's not that you need hit me up doing the live stream and we just do it live together add the variables you need and in the end we'll see what we've gathered together and what we've created and um yeah it will be in the next update depending on what you guys like what you guys like so if you're interested be sure to uh, follow me um, you can follow me on Discord, Facebook, or Instagram. All will be in the comment section down below. If you have any questions, encounter bugs, suggestions, hit me up on one of those channels. And I hope you have many safe flights. If you want to keep updated with the progress, um, please subscribe. If you like this update, please leave a like. It would help me out a lot. And have fun flying and I see you in the next one.